Now let's face it, the world of WWE is a pretty crazy and bizarre one at the best of times, but 2022 has... It's raised the bar, hasn't it? Because not only have we had walkouts, very high profile walkouts and serious scandals stealing all the headlines left, right and centre, but according to Andrew Zarian of the Wrestling Observer and Mat Men podcast, things are about to seriously change up once again because WWE are going from TV PG to TV 14. Yeah, it's happening, folks. So without further ado, I am Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling and these are 10 things you need to expect from the new WWE TV 14 era. Number 10 the more frequent returns of stars boasting attitude. Now, while those tried and tested things called dollar bills have been very much known to lure just about everyone back to WWE at some point down the line, you got to be thinking that these new developments of heading back into TV 14 waters have probably turned many ahead of the former Attitude Era men and women of yesteryear. Now, what exactly am I talking about? Well, let's just get the example out there right now, the one that you're all thinking of, The Rock. The Rock's been pretty much touted for quite some time now to be coming back to WWE to do this big old grand feud with his cousin Roman Reigns, the tribal chief. Now it's looked like it's been a little bit in peril in recent times because it's all gone a little bit quiet, not really sure what's going down with The Rock. Is he going to want to come back with all the scandal that's going on right now with Vince McMahon? But seeing things come back into his more preferred TV 14 territory right now will be something that The Rock's looking at and going, hmm, okay, yeah, I can deal with this. Because let's face it, even though he's pretty much told that he can do whatever the hell he wants when he rocks up on WWE TV, over the years, you have seen in these more modern iterations of The Rock that he's had to tone things down ever so slightly compared to his old Attitude Era promos where he'd go at people and say some rather, let's say, provocative things. All in all, you just feel like the TV 14 environment's going to be a lot more tantalising to people like The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, who obviously made his big return at WrestleMania 38, and maybe even someone like Shawn Michaels to come back for one last match in these less restrictive parameters. Number 9, Shenanigans Over Match Quality. And speaking of the Texas Rattlesnake, it must be said that even though he was a part of some of the, let's say, more high profile and well-known matches that ever went down in the Attitude Era, for the most part, he was pretty much remembered for soaking people in beer and driving around his ATV, wasn't it? And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It genuinely connected with the audience at the time. who were just mostly rebellious youngsters going, yeah, stick it to the man, man. But with this need to maybe present more angles than five-star classic matches, we didn't really get that many five-star classic matches, let's be honest. And the hard evidence is in the fact that Dave Meltzer himself did not reward a five-star match to WWE pretty much throughout the entire Attitude Era. I think between Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker at Bad Blood, Hell in a Cell, whatever that one was, that was 97, midway through 97, up until John Cena and CM Punk at Money in the Bank, which was 2011, there was no five-star match in between that time on WWE main roster television, which is crazy. Well, this is very much reflected in the fact that WWE were pushing for more angles at the time. So maybe as we go back towards this TV 14 territory, the uh, the five star matches are not gonna be held in as such high regard as covering people in beer and showing off your t Number eight, even more crude humor. And sticking with the sort of shenanigans that pretty much put World Wrestling Federation back on the map during the height of the Attitude Era, it's been no secret, really, that Vince McMahon is a huge fan of all things crude and toilet humour, is he? Now, you could definitely argue that Vince McMahon's not exactly held back on either of those fronts, really, when it comes to pouring literal crap on people and having some wrestlers stare down at other wrestlers' nails and comment on them at NXT, you know what I'm talking about? But even with that being said, these moments have been few and far between. They're not on every single episode of, like, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, but you have to feel if we go towards TV 14 territory, Vince McMahon's going to get a bit trigger-happy with throwing crap at people and it's going to be only a matter of time before Happy Corbin gets it in his face. Ew. Number seven, Cody Rhodes becoming the top guy. So with Cody Rhodes already absolutely smashing it since going back to WWE and being pretty much able to do whatever the hell he wants, it seems, in his own little corner of the WWE machine. News of this development of things going back towards maybe the environment that he's more suited to is the one that we saw in AEW, must have been music to his damn nightmare ears. Because in response to this news being broken on Twitter, Cody cheekily popped a little winky emoji on there. He knows, he knows that he's best suited to this kind of environment where he can bleed, where he can add drama, old school drama, and old school drama is just perfectly suited to this TV format. 14 world. And of course, he's already put on some absolute bangers opposite Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, WrestleMania Backlash, and the torn titty Hell in a Cell match in these rolling TV PG terms. But just imagine what Cody could do if just he had the handcuffs taken off even more and he could do some fiery table death matches and just set fire to people and have a dog collar on. Oh, it could be incredible. It could be magical. I'm maybe getting carried away 
myself, but if Cody gets to do what Cody does best in this new world, oh, we got a top guy, folks. We got him right there. He's got blonde hair and we love it. Number six, talent from other companies being more compelled to come aboard. And keeping in the vein of AEW talents looking over at WWE and going, huh, Cody Rhodes is doing pretty well. He did pretty well in AEW, but WWE have not completely squandered him and buried him straight away. I could be a big fan of that. This new TV14 news has probably made those AEW talents sit back and think even more that, yes, that could be a bit of me, that over there in WWE, I might fancy it. Because for the longest time, the whole argument with people in AEW doing really well and not maybe being best suited to going over to WWE was the fact that WWE didn't give them the platform to just speak their mind and be off the cuff and be a bit more controversial and edgy because it was PGTV and the likes of MJF in PGTV just didn't, didn't really fit, did it? Because if WWE can just let MJF do whatever the hell he wants and just speak from his heart and soul and be the absolute piece of crap we know him to be, then why wouldn't you go over? Number five, more promo freedom. And speaking of being able to go off the cuff a little bit more, you'd like to think the whole thing behind WWE being so scripted in the first place is that they don't want people to say the wrong thing on PG television because if somebody does just go off the cuff and says a swear or just says something that's just not great for sponsors, then it's going to be WWE who are going to be liable. So potentially this venture into the land of TV14 could see the end of scripted promos, but there is an argument to this that kind of undoes all that. Because something that a lot of people tend to forget is that scripted promos actually came into play whilst the TV14 first era was actually there. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin told a famous story being handed his first scripted promo when he returned to WWE in 1999. He was like, what the hell is this? What are we doing, Vince? It wasn't as scripted as the stuff that we know today, but it was already starting way back then. But if ever there was a time to just drop this practice of just telling people exactly what to say, making everyone sound the exact same and just like, cookie cutter cartoon-ish people, now is that time. Let them just speak how they want to speak and just follow their gut instincts and just dial themselves up to 11 and be the stars they were born to be, man. Number four, edgier storytelling. Because outside of a few weird Thunderdome detours when they were really trying to get people to watch their product because it was getting very hard at times with like the eye for an eye stuff and you had the, the alcoholism stuff with Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. Outside of that, WWE have been pretty pretty tiresome, pretty stale with the storylines. They've been very safe as well. They've not really done much that's been ahead of the curb or cutting edge. They've just not really needed to. It's been a PG program when it comes to PG storytelling. It doesn't really lend itself to that. It's not too difficult to see why they've done this. They've got a family-friendly product right now and they're trying to present this to an audience that they've built over the last decade or so, which pretty much consists of families and like, that kind of audience. So why would you want to shock them and disturb them and unsettle them out of nowhere? And that's particularly hard to do, again, within a PG world. And let's be honest, it's a very different world to the one that we had in the likes of the Attitude Era and D-Generation X and the Ministry of Darkness were doing, let's say, uh, pretty, pretty questionable things, let's be honest. So do not expect WWE to go back to like crucifying people and making all the dick jokes possible if they do now go down this TV14 route. But maybe they could just take inspiration from a company like AEW, one of the closest rivals right now who just offer them something new, something different, not just the same tired stuff of, hey, good guy, take some bad guy because good guy put dog food on them. He wants to see that again me a little bit, but that's not the point. Number three, an answer to blood and guts. With all that in mind, it is very difficult to see WWE suddenly going from this cartoonish land of superhero type heroes and villains to this bloody and gory and gritty TV 14 environment overnight. It's just not gonna happen. Because WWE aren't gonna wanna shock and scare all their audience that they've built up over the last 10 years or so. And they've got sponsors, and we've seen how AEW sponsors reacted to the whole Nick Gage pizza cutting thing, the domino stuff, so you don't want that. WWE don't want that kind of publicity right now. But maybe later down the line, when their audience has slowly gotten used to the whole idea of blood and carnage and Maybe even some sexiness, it's probably gonna happen, isn't it? Perhaps WWE will finally opt to have a cheeky dig back at AEW for something that Vince McMahon very stupidly said back in 2019. Because during one of his conference calls, one of the earnings calls or just something of that nature, he said that they are not in the business of blood and guts like AEW. They, they can do whatever they need to do in the PG environment and they don't wanna be doing that kind of horrible stuff. And TNT are probably not gonna like that stuff either. That's, that's exactly what Vince McMahon said. And well, it came back to haunt him a little bit. So with WWE finally getting to operate in this more, I don't know, mature environment of the TV 14 world, would you really put it past Vince just having his own cheeky dig and unleashing a violent delight at the expense of Tony Khan in a bid to get the 18 to 49 demographic to shoot up for him ratings wise? Probably not. So expect the forbidden gore to be coming to a PLE near you. Yeah. 
Number two, raunchier content. Yeah, I've alluded to this a number of times over the course of this video, but WWE is gonna have a weird obsession with sex now. I've got a bad feeling, so brace yourself. Now, of course, if you've been watching NXT 2.0 on Tuesday nights, if you're in that couple hundred thousand people that refuse to turn off their USA network television subscription service, then you will definitely know that they've already been slightly kind of nudging towards that world already with toxic attraction, just not getting out of bikinis at all, and just a lot of just love stories and sex stuff going down in NXT 2.0. But let's be honest, all this pales in comparison because what was going down back in the 90s in the Attitude Era was Sable and people like that pretty much stripping off butt naked because they had a very, very randy boss and it's all a bit horrible to look back on now, isn't it? It's also worth noting as well that this whole like angle towards sex hasn't really worked for NXT 2.0 at all. Like the younger demo's not increased massively. It's not got their audience numbers to rise. They've just been like in the low 0.10s to 0.18s, I think, which isn't very good at all. So I don't know, contrary to all that, you still feel like Vincent Man's just gonna go, what, TV 14? Yeah, get the maps out. Yeah. Number one, or maybe nothing will change at all. Ah, sorry for this swerve and bit of a curveball at the end here, but yeah, let's be honest, there's a good chance that nothing will change because this is WWE and WWE has got very much stuck in its ways, isn't it? But at the end of the day, there's still one specific man who's in charge of this whole thing right now, in charge of creative, and it is Vince McMahon. And there's no guarantee that even with this new ability to just do whatever the hell he wants and just unleash his crazy imagination, there is no guarantee that that will change absolutely anything. Yeah, sure, we could get a few extra swears, but we've already seen a few of them on Raw and SmackDown lately, just people dropping S-bombs and crap bombs and no f-bombs i don't know if we're gonna see an f-bomb are we gonna see the first f-bomb in the 2020s in wwe maybe i don't know is that is that really newsworthy at this point in all honesty it could very much go one or two ways he could just finally throw his toys out of his pram and just hit AEW head on and go you know what you want to do hard hitting adult orientated wrestling well here's how you do it properly and they could just go head to head and there won't be alternatives It'll just be the big kind of adult wrestling company going against the smaller one let's just see who wins or they could just stick to what's worked for them evidently over the last 10 years or so because they are making more money than they know what to do with and they might just stay doing the same boring content with just a few added extra swears that could very much happen too but either way you can bet that all eyes in the wrestling world will be on WWE and Vinnie Max Empire come the day that TV 14 does officially return which looks like it's going to be in the very near future and my goodness I just want to see what happens and I just don't want to see puppies everywhere don't give me puppies I don't want puppies I want pleasure filled wrestling yeah, we're not going to get that. And that is our list. Know any other things that could change in the world of TV 14 WWE? Then let me know all about them in the comments section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to all things What Culture Wrestling. Just like this video, share it to everywhere, and follow myself on Twitter at gmorgan04. Follow everybody here at What Culture, at What Culture WWE. But more importantly than all of this, have yourself the best day possible. And don't be a little Randy Sod and go and look at loads of Attitude Era videos now because I've said all this stuff because we've moved on. We're a better race now. We're a better caliber wrestling fan. So go and watch a five-star classic and not Sable with paint on a 